Hello everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome back to another true crime video. So, the case that I have for you all today is another very recent ongoing case. It will be another shorter case, but it's one that I've been following from the very beginning. And even though we know what happened for the most part, we need to stay vigilant and do what we can to be active true crime consumers to help find the answers that authorities are searching for in this case. There is a massive manhunt going on right now and tons of resources are being used to bring this case to justice. This case is very much similar to the Gabby Petito case and we know how much of a difference it made when people got involved and wanted to help out in the search for Brian Laundrie. Now we can put in the same amount of effort in the manhunt for Aaron Pennington. But before we get into the video, I just wanna take a quick second I am actually looking for a graphic designer. I'm planning on making a new logo, a new banner, and I'm actually trying to plan something for like a banner to bring to CrimeCon. I got some professional headshots done, so I already have the photography element taken care of. I just need somebody to help me put my headshots on a fun background that's true crime related, obviously, and help me create a banner and just something that kind of fits my style and obviously something that embodies true crime and everything that is Rachel Shannon true crime. So if you are a graphic designer or if you know a graphic designer, please email me at rachelshannonyt at gmail.com. Just my name, yt for youtube at gmail.com. Please send me over your portfolio. Anybody with true crime experience obviously is preferred, but I'm pretty open. I just really need someone that can work with me to sort of get my ideas onto paper. I pretty much have what I want. I just need someone that can help me sort of make it come to life. So again, if you are interested in working with me to create something really cool and sort of, I guess, rebrand my channel and help me out with my banner for CrimeCon, which I'm so excited for. I will be going to CrimeCon UK, by the way. I haven't totally made that announcement yet, but I will be attending. I'll make a more formal announcement later on. But again, if you are interested in working with me, please shoot me an email again at rachelshannonyt at gmail.com. That will be listed down below, so you can just go ahead and highlight it and copy copy paste. With that being said, let's discuss the case at hand. Today, we will be discussing the brutal murder of Brianne Pennington. Brianne Pennington was born on October 27th, 1992 to parents Robert and Elizabeth Hull in Montgomery, Texas. But eventually, she and her family moved to Riverside, California, where she attended Riverside High School and Riverside Community College. Brienne and her family were members of the Church of the Latter-day Saints. Brienne was known as being a glistening star in the lives of many starting at an early age. She grew up loving horses, being an accomplished rider. She was a member of the 4-H club when she was little. She was known to do extremely well in science in school as well. In high school, she loved singing, so naturally, she joined as a member in her church's choir. As an adult, Brienne, who went by the nickname Breezy, loved doing makeup on herself and others and was known overall as a happy woman who loved others. She was welcoming and loving towards everybody, and she was one of the most kind people that you could ever meet, according to those who knew her. Her friends all said that she was the funniest person. She had the best and worst dark humor. She loved true crime, cooking, and heavy metal music. Her cousin posted about her on Facebook, writing, quote, Breezy was an absolute gem to the world. She was the best mother anyone could ever ask for, an amazing friend, support system, astrology enthusiast, spooky time lover, and so much more I could bring up. But most importantly, Brienne loved her family to no end. After growing up mostly in the West Coast, Brianna found herself in Arizona, where she met her soon-to-be husband, Aaron Pennington. The first public picture of their relationship was posted to Aaron's Facebook back on April 16th, 2013, where Aaron referred to Brianne as his girlfriend. Then, that same year, by July of 2013, the two got married. And by the spring of 2014, the couple had their first baby together. By the time of her death, Brienne and Aaron had four children, Avi, Levi, Charles, and Heidi, who were ages 2, 5, 7, and 9. I don't know if those ages correlate to the children in that same order. I just know the ages of the children. I know their names, but I don't know how old each child is. Now, 
Aaron was a veteran who served his country for several years. Back in 2015, Aaron began service active duty in the Air Force as a senior airman, where he served for six years. He was also an airlift, special mission, and aircraft maintenance journeyman. According to Facebook, back in 2017, he was stationed in Japan. After that, by 2022, Aaron was stationed in Arizona. Then he separated from the Air Force altogether by February of 2023. After that, Aaron worked as a senior supervisor of manufacturing and operations as an aerospace engineer through Raytheon. By the time of Brianne's death, Aaron and Brianne were living in a nice family home that they purchased in Gardner, Massachusetts. Now, if you asked those on the outside who knew Brianne and Aaron, it appeared that they had a pretty good marriage. Both Aaron and Brianne loved their children to no end. On Aaron's Facebook, all you see is photos of his children and messages of support for his wife and family. He also frequently posts about his faith as a member of the Mormon church. As recently as June of 2023, Aaron posted a status to talk about how much he looks up to his own father and how much of an impact his amazing wife, Brianne, has made on his life. In the post, Aaron wrote, quote, There are many great men that I know in my life. Many also happen to be fathers and do an incredible job at showing strong financial work ethic, dedication, love to their wives and family. These examples are very close to my heart, and I know they are amazing men. I know when I grow into the best version of myself, I will always remember the woman that supported me in this. That is my one true love, Breezy. You are the most important human being on this earth that I have come to know. I know you are very smart, and I hope to be as smart as you and my dad. In another post back in 2019, Aaron wished his wife a happy birthday, writing, quote, I wanted to wish my wife a happy birthday. She is so beautiful. I love her. You deserve everything for all you do. I would be nothing without her. Thank you for being such a perfect mother and wife. I got so lucky for her to find me. So again, it seemed like he was very grateful for his wife. He seemed to love her and wanted everybody else to know all about her. However, Behind closed doors, even though Brienne was trying to keep her family together and do what she could to support Aaron and their children, Aaron was struggling with mental health issues. Over the course of a few years, things were getting worse and worse in their marriage, and Brienne was getting ready to leave. Aaron had threatened suicide multiple times according to those closest to the relationship, and the relationship that they had just was no longer healthy. According to some sources, she had plans to pack the kids up and move with them back to Texas. Friends say that she was actively saving up money to leave, and it was obvious to Aaron and pretty much everybody who knew Brienne very closely that she was not staying in this marriage much longer. However, by Sunday, October 22nd, 2023, at around 9.14 a.m., the Gardner police received a 911 call from a neighbor of Aaron and Brienne's to report that Brienne's children had run over to the neighbor's house, saying that they were scared because they couldn't find their father and that their mother was in her bedroom crying. The neighbor noticed that Aaron's car was not in the driveway, so it was clear to him that he had left. Five minutes later, by 9.19 a.m., first responders arrived to the residence located at 42 Cherry Street, and what they walked into was horrific. They found Brienne lying in her bed in her upstairs bedroom, deceased with a gunshot wound to her face. After completing a sweep of the home, first responders found three shell casings in the bedroom, but they found that no one else was in the home at that time, and they could not find any weapons in the home either. After this discovery, police started their investigation. They first found surveillance video from one of their neighbors, which showed Aaron leaving the driveway of their home at 8.50 a.m., driving his white 2013 BMW sedan. It then showed the children exiting the house and running to the neighbor's house at 9.07 a.m. Police also noted in their report that Brienne was known to have a firearm in the home for her own protection. Some reports say that it was a shotgun, some say that it was just a handgun or some sort of pistol, but like I said, the firearm was not found in the home when they made the search. By the following day after Brienne's body was found on Monday, October 23rd, 2023, an autopsy was performed. 
At this time, the medical examiner confirmed that Brianne's cause of death was the result of a single gunshot wound to her face, and her manner of death was the result of homicide. Of course, the main suspect is Aaron, her husband. So, the next thing police did was get a search warrant to look at the content on Aaron's cell phone. According to the arrest warrant, they were only able to look at a limited amount of information at this time, but what they did find was disturbing. Now, I do want to note that I'm not sure if Aaron left his cell phone behind and that is how they were able to look into his phone or if they were able to use a cloud method like logging into his iCloud and they found this that way, but either way, they weren't able to see a lot, but they did find something. They found a note that was written at 7 p.m. on October 21st, 2023. The note read, quote, don't say anything. Be quiet. If she wakes up, just say you're getting nasal spray. Get on the side of the bed. Very close proximity to the head. Put a hole in her head. Of course, this note pretty much blankly says that he is planning to murder his wife and says exactly how he is going to do it. But at that point, Aaron was gone and police had no idea where he went. So, police issued a warrant for his arrest in connection to his wife's murder. At first, I believe they only put out a warrant for his arrest for unlawful possession of a firearm because the firearm that was in the home was not registered to either of them. So, that was the first arrest warrant issued, but after seeing this note on his phone, that is when they issued the warrant for charges of murder. And from there, the search for Aaron began. As soon as their search began on Monday, October 23rd at 8.50 a.m., police actually ended up finding Aaron's car abandoned near Camp Collier, which is a Boy Scout camp located on the Gardner-Ashburnham line. The car was found actually by a hunter in the area who then immediately reported it to police. But with that car, they found no sign of Aaron. So, they went ahead and did an extensive search around the 400-acre wooded area around where the car was found, but they did not find any sign of Aaron. After that, they sent a dive team in to search Lake Wampanoag, which is right near where his car was located and about five miles away from his home, but they also still have not found anything. At this time, family members of Brienne's are frustrated at the lack of answers in their search for Aaron. But as I stated, he is originally from California. So, some family members of Brianne's suspect that he may be heading back to his home in California. But again, nothing has been found. Since then, they have spanned over 200 heavily wooded acres on ground and by helicopter searching for Aaron. Some people believe that Aaron is still alive and is out there, either looking for somewhere to hide or has already found somewhere to go, while other family members believe that he probably took his own life. But regardless, police warned that they are still searching for Aaron and described him as being armed and dangerous. They also pointed out that he does have military training and that may help him survive a long time in the woods and evade capture for a lot longer than most normal people could. The most recent information that I have found is that they have suspended searches as of right now, but they basically said that they did this to sort of recollect what their strategy is and they will soon get back out there and start their searches again. So like I said, the search is gonna continue. I really don't have any too, too many answers at this point. We're still treating like this like he is alive and would be somewhere in the woods. We did find a vehicle. Uh, the vehicle was located by a hunter. So we're asking anyone with trail cams, any hunters, any people with video cameras at their houses, please give it to the uh, police. I'm going to have the number in a second, Gardner Police or the State Police. It's incredible how often that these tips help us solve crimes, find people. So we're asking the public for all of their help. Right now, I'll turn it with regards to the number of the Gardner Police Chief. Thank you, DA. <clears throat> Again, um, I'd appreciate it. We'd appreciate any contact. If anybody could look on a trail cam, specifically in the Old County area, of Ashburnham, uh, out to the Route 101 area. Anybody who hunts these areas, uh, could you check your trail cam, see if anything came across? Um, you can contact the Gardner Police Department, 978-632-5600, uh, uh, or any uh, Massachusetts State Police as well. And again, uh, we're asking for the public's help. The search is gonna continue uh, right now. Uh, the children are still in the custody of the Department of Child and Family Services. 
and uh, we're just going to take it from there. I could take a couple of questions, but we really don't have much to add. Joe, have you found anything? In, uh, there was some radio traffic about some bloody clothes that were found out here. Have you found anything at all? No, we haven't found any bloody clothes. We, we, you know, we have the tire tracks. We know where the cow went into the woods, you know, the general area. Um, we've gotten some information that's come in with regards to the car itself and, and possibilities. Right now we're working on possibilities, and uh, thank God that hunter, uh, you know, I don't know when or where we might have found the car, but there was a bow hunter going through the area and he found the vehicle, immediately notified the Gardner police. Did you find Any a weapon? Idea? Weapon? Any idea on the weapon? We are assuming that the, the man is armed with a handgun. We are assuming that. Um, like you said, and, and the state police, Garden Police, Ashburnian Police, and state police detectives, I mean, K-9 to the air, incredible professionals. They're doing an incredible job with regards to this. They're treating it like they have a man who's armed in the woods, and uh, they're going out to take an abundance of caution. They're going out there in numbers, and we ask, please, no one in the public, go out and try and look for this guy. If you run into the guy, call the Garden Police, call the state police, call the police department, and just back off from anything that you might see, but provide us with the information that you might get. Any How idea when area? he may have come into the woods? Yeah, I believe it would have been sometime Sunday. How Sunday big morning. of an area are you looking at? Well, this is a big area. It's about 400 acres uh, out here. You know, and it's incredible the way they do the work. Um, as they go through the woods, it comes in on a grid. Uh, I don't want to go too much into that. I don't want... Uh, but, but they know where they've been, and they, they know where they need to look. Have the cabins been searched? Have you already looked at all the cabins out here? That's part of the investigation. They, you know, Bob, they're not, they're, walk, they're not walking by anything that, that needs to be searched. But are they still looking at cabins or have they finished that? They're looking at everything. I know Mr. Pennington has a military background. Do you think he has the skill set to survive in the woods? Well, you, you know, that's part of the training. The, those are the questions that the state police have been asking, and they're finding out exactly what training he would have had, wouldn't have had. Yes, that is part of the equation. Yes. This, this area up here to your right is uh, Camp Collier. It's a land trust. Um, Boy Scouts. Um, churches used it for get, uh, getaways, things like that. Um, it's, it's very heavily wooded, it's uh, sparse. Um, you can go a long ways without seeing anything. So we're, 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 the grid search is large at this point in time. We're operating, again, like the DA said, we're operating the assumption that, that Mr. Pennington is still alive um, and on the run. Uh, we, we, again, we do believe um, to treat him as he's armed and dangerous, um, given the circumstances. And, uh, and again, if any, anybody sees anything, please report it immediately. Car, you think the car was here since Sunday morning, right, right after a homicide, he came here? Bob, I don't know exactly when he got here. Yeah, I mean, it was found uh, Sunday, but I, I don't know exactly when it got here. Um, but it uh, that started a lot of what you see here and, now. And it was deep into the woods? Like, can you describe yeah, it? Was, it, was a, it was a good measure into the woods, yeah. You, you, you couldn't see it from the road. It was... Uh, it was a good 1,500 feet. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, it, it was, it was. A cell phone, was he have a cell phone? Did it ping at all? I, we were hearing all kinds of rumors that it was in a different place. That, that's something that's all part of the investigation, um, any time, anything with regards to the cell phones, but we got to let them there do, do their job. I can't get too far into that, uh, anything that might potentially jeopardize the investigation. That's going to be all the questions. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you. Brianne's family has begged Aaron to turn himself in. They said, quote, he needs to turn himself in, not be a coward. He needs to do it for the kids. And I agree. It appears that Aaron shot Brianne in their bedroom while the children were still in the home with them. Then, instead of facing responsibility for what he did, he abandoned his children, left the home, and are making police use resources and taxpayer dollars to search for him. As of right now, the children are in the custody of family and child services. Right now, Aaron is still missing, and many, many police agencies are searching for him. They said that they do not want the public to go out there and search for him because he is a dangerous individual. They ask that if you see him, you do not confront Aaron, but if you run into him, they ask that you contact the Massachusetts State Police at 508-829-8236 or the Gardner Police Department at 978-632-5600. So that is all of the information that I have for today's case. Once again, I know that this is a very short video, probably one of the shortest I've ever done, and I know that I've been doing a lot more of these like recent shorter cases in the past few weeks, but when I do see a case as urgent as this one, I feel that it's so important to cover it because these are the types of cases where we as true crime consumers can truly make a massive difference in how this case can be solved. 
So all I ask is that you share this video, share Brianne's story, and keep on the lookout for the man responsible for all of this turmoil that the family is now facing. As with any recent video that I cover, I will keep you all up to date on the status of the investigation, and of course, if Aaron is found. I am hopeful that this will be solved and that Aaron will be found dead or alive. I just want to see justice for her family and those precious children who now lost both of their parents for absolutely no reason. This seems to be yet another case of a man who feels that he must control his family and who has mental health issues but probably wasn't getting help for them and relied on his wife for all of his emotional needs, which is just too much for one person to handle. So when the man feels like he's losing control of what's happening around him, he chooses violence. He chooses the coward's way. Obviously, I'm not saying most men. I'm not saying all men. I'm saying that the men in these specific situations, this is, I think, how it happens a lot of the time. I am happy that Aaron's children were spared, but that is a small consolation in this case, given that their mother is now gone and their father is a wanted criminal. My heart goes out to them, as well as Brienne's family and anybody else who knew. And loved her. But that is where the case sits right now and where I'm going to end the video. Do you think that Aaron is going to be found and apprehended? Do you think he took his own life? If so, how long do you think it will take to find him? Do you think he would ever turn himself in? Let me know any and all thoughts that you have in the comments below. If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to turn the notification bell to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure you follow my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. All will be linked down below. And if you have any case suggestions, please make sure to fill out the Google form, which is also linked down below. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye. <music>